This episode felt like it was only five minutes, which is honestly a curse, really, because when it comes to a good show, you kind of lose track of time. You kind of, like, get immersed into an episode, and the ending song starts playing, you're like, wait, that's it? It's over, and you gotta wait till next week. It, it really sucks, honestly. Like, when you really get into a show, it feels like the episodes are just so short, but in reality, they're not. They're, like, 20 minutes, but they feel like five, maybe three minutes, because, honestly, this episode was that good to me. I really really got immersed with this episode, and I love seeing how far Kuhn will go to really get Bam and certain individuals a part of his team to pass. And so, I guess this is a perfect segue to talk about what Kuhn did. So, it made it very clear within the episode, but I want to kind of dive into the nitty-gritty of why it was done, etc. So, Kuhn was already set to pass. For instance, before this test happened with this game of tag, certain individuals are already pretty much guaranteed to move on on the test and all that to be completely fine, even if this team fell, for instance, Team A. For instance, Anok, Shibisu, you know, hashtag mood sleepyhead, you know, Kuhn, they were pretty much all going to move on regardless. And that's why it was very important for Kuhn to purposely make his team fell. And the reason for it is because the more people that fell, the greater chance it is for Bam and people part of his team to pass. There's less people filling in these spots because that's the whole purpose of what this is about. It's about basically, you know, each individual proving who's, let's say, the best, let's say, wave controller, spear bearer, light bearer, you know, getting to uh, see the person that's the best fisherman. Y you get the point. It's about who is the best in which role. And there's only a limited amount of spots that are actually open for someone to get. For instance, that was the whole reason why Endorsey was actually in, to like, talking to Bam in this episode about, you know, if Team A passes, you pretty much fell, right? Because if they pass, you will not be able to move up because the spot of wave controllers would be completely taken. So that was kind of the main purpose of it. So if Kuhn's team did indeed pass, Bam was straight up not going to be able to pass. There was just no way. Even if he took the test, he was not going to pass whatsoever, which leads into some other drama and stuff to talk about in a moment. But the point, though, is, is that this episode, Kuhn devised a plan to be able to make it where the people that he already considered a part of his team, for instance, the, the people that wrote their names on the friends list, you know, he wanted them to pass, and they were already going to pass to begin with before this test, so there was no reason for them to take this test really seriously. They needed to have everybody else fail to be able to allow Team B to be able to pass. So that was kind of the whole purpose of it. Now, the question is, we don't really know how many people were really a part of this strategy. We don't really know if Shibisu or Anok or any of them were really a part of it. The only people that were kind of a part of it was Kuhn and Laurel about the whole plan of betraying Team A to allow Team B to have a chance, for instance, Bam, to move up the tower. So, we don't really know who else was a part of it. For all we know, it was just those two. We don't know if Anok, Shibisu, and all of them were a part of it. You can kind of speculate maybe even Endorsey kind of had hints, but she didn't know either because the way she was acting towards Bam. So yeah, that was the whole purpose of it, which is interesting to see how Kuhn was actually able to outsmart a ranker himself. And you gotta love the witty dialogue that he had with, you know, the ranker. He's just like, you know, you want to go up? And the way he did that was very... It kept with the theme, the core theme of what it means to climb the tower. Because when you think about what happened at the beginning of the series, when the episode or like episode one first came out, it was all about like, you know, do you want to climb? Do you want to move on up? That's the whole purpose, that people want to climb the tower to achieve their goal, achieve their dream, be able to have their wish granted, find purpose in their life, etc. And that's kind of the point here, is that with the way Kuhn kind of talk to the ranker. He was kind of like, oh, acting like the test giver. Like, oh, you want to go up? You know, I'll, I'll allow you to go up. You can go up. You, you don't have to fail if you listen to me. And it's just a very interesting way for Kuhn to get under someone's skin. And you can see he easily made the dude very angry. He made him absolutely angry. But for that reason alone, it makes you wonder, why would Kuhn make the ranker so angry after everything that has been established thus far? And I'm going to kind of get back into that. The whole purpose of why this ranker is such a bad idea to be a teacher for this, like, you know, a test giver, is because he is someone that doesn't go easy on people. Even if they are a ant on the side of the road, he will give 100% power and obliterate that entire floor underneath the ant and everything just to get rid of it. He is not someone that backs down. He's not someone that doesn't give 
100%. So we know that he has quite a, a bit of like ego. He is someone that wants to win. He is a sore loser. And technically, because of what Kuhn did, he technically made the man lose. Even though he did win the test, he still lost to Kuhn. And you got to imagine from his perspective, there is a lot of anger he has. He was played like a fiddle by Team A, or at least Kuhn's team, to be able to allow Bam a chance. And he obviously has keyed in on this. He has keyed in on the fact of what Kuhn was planning, what he was trying to do, and it's probably going to be a lot harder for Team B to be able to pass this test, which brings into a really good question now. Why would Kuhn do that? Why would Kuhn make the next part of the test for Team B even harder and kind of make the man get even angrier? Now, we do know that he obviously is very simple-minded. He isn't weak, and he is a ranker, which means you should not underestimate him by any means. You should not underestimate a ranker no matter what. No matter how simple-minded they are, you should not un uh, like underestimate them because they've climbed the tower. They, they have climbed the tower, which means that they are definitely worthy of their title. For Kuhn to kind of play with this man and get him upset, why would that be a thing? Why would he do that? Now, let's talk about the actual situation of what Kuhn did to win, besides the whole betrayal thing. You have it to where he gets everybody to kind of do their own thing, basically is planning out trying to get the tag from the ranker, and that whole purpose of that was to show that it is impossible to get the tag from the ranker. You, there's just no way you're going to be able to confront the ranker and be able to grab said tag, because he's just too strong. You, you can't do nothing. No matter what you do with your plans, even if you have the numbers, you're not going to overpower this man by any means, because he's seen it, he's done it, he's climbed the tower, so he knows what to expect expect. So that is the big point here is that the whole purpose of a knock going in like she did at the end of last episode and at the beginning of this episode was to show Team B you cannot do this. You, you cannot try to go up against this man. You need to run towards the exit. But the next thing a part of the test was to show that even if you try to run to get to the exit, there is still other things that you need to factor in, is that you can't just run to the exit. There has to be strategy. You have to be able to hide, you know, your said person holding the tag, because, for instance, the ranker was able to detect where a knock was holding the tag, even though Kuhn had her floating down on a lighthouse below the bridge, he was able to detect her. That was a big deal right there, is that even if you try to hide said person, he most likely will detect them. So you can't necessarily hide from this man, and he uses the shadows to kind of cloak himself in invisibility where you can't really see him, and he uses Shinso like that where you can't really do much. So he has the ability of quick speed, he has the ability of kind of using stealth, and he has great strength and all that, so you can't really overpower the man. Even a princess of Zahad can't actually do that. We saw a knock fell, and if a princess can't do that, then not even Endorsey herself probably could stand up against the man. So there is a lot of ways that, you know, Team A or Kuhn gave hints to Bam's team, and they need to use that to be able to win. We now know what Kuhn has done. He has definitely devised a plan to allow, you know, Bam's team a better chance to be able to pass, because that's the whole objective of what Kuhn was doing. So most likely some individuals are probably keyed in. Most likely Endorsey is because of the way she acted at the end of this episode. She went out of her way and attacked some individuals a part of her team, which could make you assume the reason why she's doing that is probably for the plan of getting Bam to pass and certain individuals to pass, because that, that's probably the point here. But on top of that, the question is what is going to happen with, you know, Ho, because that is a big flag up in the air after the events of last episode, and I'll get into that in just a second. But Endorsey is definitely somehow a part of a plan. If it's not Kuhn, it's someone else. She is definitely a part of something because of what she did towards the end. So it means that even then, even though Kuhn is not a part of this test, he is still technically, you know, manipulating certain events to happen, which does show his ability of a light bearer. He is someone that is supposed to oversee the battlefield, someone that's supposed to get plans and strategy and be a team leader. So when you think about it, even though he's not there right now, he is still doing his job. And so if there's anyone that is proving that they're worthy of their position, it is Kuhn. Kuhn is worthy of his position of light bearer because he is still able to kind of somehow manipulate the events in a test that that is not even his own test. Says a lot. But okay, let's talk about Bam 
and his role in this test and kind of what is going on. So I don't know how many kind of keyed in on it, but Bam mentioned Rachel in this episode. Now, I know that's nothing too shocking. Bam is always talking about Rachel. Okay, I know that. But the point is, is that Bam straight up, he calls Michelle Rachel. It, it's very clear at this point, if you haven't keyed in, that Bam is definitely aware that Rachel is just hiding herself. She's not wanting to see Bam. And this is the whole reason why Kuhn even said something to Bam a while ago. Even if it somehow turns out that Michelle Light is actually Rachel, it means that she doesn't really want to see you right now. So right now, you should focus on yourself, get stronger, etc. And then, one day when she wants to, she will face you. And that's kind of the point here, is that it's very clear that Bam isn't stupid and he is definitely someone that is very aware that most likely that girl that he saved is Rachel he is almost 100% certain I mean he even calls the person that's hiding themselves with a, a hood over their head as Rachel in this episode towards the end so it's apparent it's very apparent that he's aware it's just he's keeping his distance out of respect for Rachel for whatever she's trying to do and he's doing his own thing but he is still concerned which is really gets into the fact of how Endorsey got a little bit upset within this episode. It's a very quick moment, and some are obviously going to catch it, but take it in a very wrong way. Or you can take it in both ways, honestly. The first way people are going to take Endorsey getting a little bit upset when Bam mentions Rachel, where is she, etc., you know, you're going to think that maybe Endorsey's getting jealous, that Bam is talking about a said girl, okay? that That's pretty much like what you're going to get from that, is that Endorsey's just upset, because, you know, you have this beautiful woman in front of you, but you're thinking of Rachel when I'm right here as a princess, a princess of Zahad that is straight up like a trophy. And it's just like, really? You're, you're focused on someone else? And many might think that's what she is implying, which potentially is the case. But there is another reason, too, what you can add on to this, is that the reason why she got upset was because of the conversation she had with Rachel in the previous episode. Is that, you know, hopefully whatever you're climbing for, Rachel, is worth more than Bam, because he's desperately climbing this tower, desperately trying to find you, risking his life to protect you, but you still won't see him. So, she's getting annoyed of how Rachel's kind of treating Bam, of how she refuses to just tell him like it is, refuses is to just truly say why she doesn't want to see him, etc. That's the whole purpose of it. She She's not doing that, and, and Dorsey's getting upset, which I've already talked about in my previous episode. We don't really know what's going on with Rachel either. We can assume that maybe she's getting held captive against her will, like she has a contract or something that is forcing her from not actually, you know, communicating with Bam for whatever reason, like her life is on the line, someone else's life is on the line. But it, it makes sense to why Endorsey's getting upset. So that is a huge part about this episode. Now, Serena has a little bit of a backstory within this episode, some characterization. She's a character that I think many have grown quite fond of because of her interactions with Shibisu in previous episodes. She's a fun character, but she obviously has been very, like, one-dimensional technically because there hasn't really been a lot of characterization and development for her, besides her just having a really good personality that meshes well with, you know, Shibisu. This episode tries to rectify that and give us details on her and kind of what she's fighting for, why she climbs the tower in the first place. And it's fascinating, honestly, because we see a brief backstory showing that she was a thief. She was someone that was with a group of friends that were trying to get into this ship and steal something. But it turns out that, you know, those people that were trying to break in with her, they all died to a ranker that appeared. Now, we're not able to see the ranker. The ranker is a black silhouette, so we're not able to see who it really is, which is definitely something that makes you wonder, is this going to be a character that's going to appear later on in the story? Because Serena is technically a main character. She is a part of the characters that Kuhn is trying to get to pass. That was the whole point of what this episode is about is that Kuhn wants to climb the tower with the certain individuals that has formed this team with that friends list and when they sign their names on. So Serena is technically a part of that. So the thing about this is, is who was that ranker and are they going to be someone very important in the future? Most likely that will definitely be the case. But the point though is, is at the time of when Serena was being a thief, she lost everyone. She lost her friends and she really didn't have a purpose in life. She didn't really have anything going for her. She didn't really know what she wanted. She felt like there was nothing. She was hopeless. There was nothing in her life. She had nothing. And in some ways, you could kind of view her as very similar to Bam. Because technically, Bam is someone that's a, 
a husk. He's someone that really only has Rachel, and without that, he really doesn't have much, which we have seen that he has grown to get more attached to others, he's gaining friends, but he's still kind of a husk. And Serena is kind of something similar to that. She's someone that really doesn't have much, and she wants to find what she wants while climbing the tower. And in some cases, when you think about what she said within this episode to Ho, she most likely has already kind of felt what she wanted, you know, a purpose or something that makes it her life have worth, etc. Which she has joined a group of friends that like her, enjoy spending time with her, and that's most likely something that she really desperately desires, but she wants to climb the tower. And in this case, that was the whole purpose of that, is that she wants to be able to find worth. And Ho kind of takes this in a very wrong way. He's like, well, this is the reason. Like, that's the, w the reason why we climbed the tower. We climbed the tower to shove those people down that are unfortunate for we can climb as well. We do what we must to climb. And that's kind of the point here is that, as I was stating in the last episode review, is that the atmosphere that this, you know, group of people within this tower, these regulars have made, isn't necessarily normal. Usually, they're supposed to be at their throats trying to end each other, trying to pass the tower, but obviously, that has not been the case and technically what Ho is currently doing you know we do what we must to climb the tower is typically how people would react and so he's like we need to be play dirty we need to be able to get rid of someone without a moment's hesitation no matter how well acquainted we are with them we need to be able to do what we can to climb the tower so that's an interesting little tidbit to this episode so the question is what is Ho going to do because obviously we know that he was given some form of piece of paper that was very secretive we don't really know what it is about, but it's clear that he is definitely gunning for the position of passing, which leads into the next section. Ho is a wave controller, and technically only a limited amount of wave controllers can pass. And we know what Ho is technically fighting for. He's fighting for his people. He's fighting for those that he loves, basically, back home, the people he left behind. He wants to fight for them to have a better life. So you got to do what you must to be able to climb the tower for whatever dream you want. So that's kind of what this episode's implying, is that it's pitting Bam and Ho against each other because they're both wave controllers and only one can really pass this test. So I'm going to leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. And with that, Chibi out.